Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. Time for another Metal Earth build. Today I'm building another bridge. We have the London Tower Bridge. It is built over the Thames and both a suspension bridge and a draw bridge. Let's open it up, see what's inside, see how difficult it is, and put it together. Let's put together the London Tower Bridge. First let's open it up. Inside, I think there's two sheets. Yep, there's two metal sheets. Put those to the side. We have a sheet of instructions. We open this up. You can see yellow, older, tall instructions. I'm going to fold that in half. We're just going to look at the top half to start. And everything is split up into quarters. So the first quarter up in the top left, you have information basically. Metal Earth model, you've got the website where you can look at a 360 view, a line drawing. One of the parts here is pointing at things like insertion tab holes, fold lines, insertion tabs, so you know what they are. And you know those pliers are helpful for assembly. And we have the legend when you see a blue circle in the directions. It's telling you to insert a tab in its slot and bend it over 90 degrees. Green triangle is telling you to insert the tab and twist it 90 degrees. And a little diagram here about pulling and screwing the metal tabs to make them more secure. And then at the bottom of this first section, we have the metal sheets. We just match those up. And that way we have all the parts numbers listed. They point to the part, we can find them on the sheet, and we can put this together. We move over to the top right to the assembly flowchart, starting with part one, two, those fold and come together. It's actually two part twos coming into here, and that's what it looks like. And then three times two, and add this twice. So three times two to two, four times two, so you're supposed to do that twice. So I'm not sure if that totals up to four or just the two. Hmm. I'll find out. Once you get done there, go down to the bottom left. Pick up with four, five, so on and so forth. Just follow the arrows. And then this side, follow the arrows. Once you've gotten down here at the bottom of the first page, you flip it over. And I'm going to fold it again so we can fit everything on the screen to the top left pick up with six seven over here follow the arrows get down here flip to the bottom left put that together over here put this together and you're all done let's talk tools I have a pretty standard set of tools that I use in most every build I have needle nose pliers I have flat nose pliers I have flush clippers. These are a must for me. They clip parts off the sheets quickly and cleanly. I have a set of precision tweezers, one with a very pointed end, one with the pointed end ground down slightly, a flat set with a sort of curved tip, useful for twisting tabs in slightly curved areas. I also have a pretty standard set of tweezers with a flat angled end. These come in one of the Iconics kits, and I use them a lot. These Kelly clamps, or hemostats, I've heard them called several names, can be used to hold on to small parts while guiding them into place. They lock, so they won't let go. I do not use them much because they have teeth, and you can scratch the part, but sometimes my hands are just too small. I've recently started using a sculpting set. I got this pretty cheap on Amazon. It's a whole set, just a lot of different shapes and sizes, some with angles, some with points, some with flat sides. It's good for pushing over tabs, reaching inside and pushing on the inside, helping to shape small areas you're just too tight to get into. And we have a couple of hook shapes down here to replace the hook tools that I used to use. Looked at the instructions real quick. We see our metal sheets here. I've got some tools to get me started. Let's put this together.
it may be time to look into some new long nose pliers. These are having a harder time getting parts bent evenly. Oops, I put part two in the middle, my mistake. I didn't want to bend part 3 and 5 all the way close until I attached them to the tower. I at least started the bend so it would be easier to finish them. I just realized I clipped out part 6 when I needed part 5. I use my sculpting tools to bend over the tabs inside rather than trying to twist them with such limited space. It worked just fine for these connections. At this point I was still working out the best way to attach these columns to the tower.
By this point, I had worked out the best way for me at least to get these columns on was to bend the two narrow ends at 90 degrees and then the center bend at almost 90 degrees. Then bend out two of the tabs on one side slightly. Start with those tabs first and the other two will be close to if not ready to fall into place. After the part was attached, I used the pliers to pinch the center fold in to complete the 90 degrees. The assembly flowchart that I use suggests putting a curve on the sides of part 8. The picture on the cover of the package does not show a curve, but there is a slight one on the bridge itself as far as I can tell online. Most pictures only show the center part and I've not seen it in person. I was determined to put that curve in there and I used the handle of an older screwdriver with indentions on it to help form the curve. I did notice the assembly flowchart online does not indicate the curve of the part. I wanted to go with a neater appearance, so I bent the tabs inward. The first curved end piece went on smoothly, but the second one just did not seem to want to fall into place nor stay there.
I decided to bend the tabs out on the next section hoping maybe that would go better. In this video, I cut out some parts where I tried numerous times to get a part to fit or had to make multiple adjustments to something to allow it to fit. I try to show a little bit of everything, but sometimes you may see in a video that I make one or two adjustments, when in reality I made many more. I do that to move the build along. These builds take time. Be patient, take your time, and be prepared to make numerous test fits and adjustments during this or any build. This is definitely one of those places where it took multiple tries to get the part into place. And I present to you the London Tower Bridge. You know, this is the second bridge I've done and they've turned out to be a little more involved than I would have expected. I would have thought they would be easy to put together and fairly quick. But the Tower Bridge and the other bridge that I did, not so much. It wasn't terribly hard. It did take some time. But of course, as I always say, this looks really neat. And it will go with some of the London-esque things or British things that I already have. Now I just need to build the uh, London Eye. But anyway, it didn't. It wasn't really complicated. It just took time, so it wasn't anything frustrating. I did enjoy this build. It took about an hour and 45 minutes for me to build this, and I judge that by the amount of video that I have. And I usually come down just a little bit because there's, you know, setting up the camera and other things that go on. It's not just all building. But with this, there were two things that occurred. One, I kept stopping to take pictures for the contest that Fascination is having. And two, with the time it took to try and figure out how to curve those end pieces, curve the walls, that took up a lot of time. And had I just went with them straight, like the uh, newer instructions in the picture said, that would have been much faster. So probably an hour and 15 to an hour and a half if you take away those things. 
when I build these models, I do have a tendency to learn something, especially with the landmark type stuff. I've never been to England. I didn't realize that the London Tower Bridge and the London Bridge were two different things. Now I know. But beyond that, there's not a lot to say other than it's, it was a fun build and it looks really nice and it wasn't hard to do. If you have any questions or comments, as always, leave them down below. Thank you for watching and keep on keeping on.